hi it is wednesday late night almost midnight thought i'd do part two before i went to bed and see if it would load up while i was asleep so this is my war tales a little bit of a story time here gonna be some different parts i left off where we had just landed and sodding and getting off the C-130. So, like I said, it was extremely, extremely hot. So we get off the C-130 and like I said, I was looking for a regular terminal and it was nothing but a tent and a table and we all had to sign in if I'm not mistaken so they know who was actually on the flight and all that kind of good stuff. So then, they tell us that they're getting ready to take us to Tent City. Well, I packed everything in a duffel because, you know, it's not like we could carry regular luggage. So, I'm an overpacker. And they said 90 days, but I didn't know. So, I'm trying to bring everything but the kitchen sink. So, my duffel bag was extremely heavy. So, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to take us to Tent City. How are we getting there? I'm thinking they're going to bring a bus. Oh, no, 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 no. They bring a dump truck. Yes, a dump truck. Now, dump trucks are extremely high and hard to get into. So then I had to have somebody push me pretty much, push me over into the dump truck and throw me my duffel bag. This was starting out to be a very long day. I'm hot. The sun is beating down on us. Uh, you know, you're in a strange place. There's nothing out there. Literally, is desert. So when you drive, the dirt is flying. It, it's just, it's just a hot mess. So then we get to Tent City. The people that came before us had started Tent City, but it wasn't completed. So we go to, um, I guess it would be like the um, check-in um, tent of Tent City. So we go there, they give us each two bottles of water, a cot, and give you the number of the tent to where you're going to be staying. Of course, I was in a female tent and there wasn't that many. And it was like probably a block from the check-in tent. So here I am with this heavy butt duffel bag, a cot, and two bottles of water trying to find my tent in the hot, hot, hot Saudi Arabia. Finally get to my tent. I could not get my cot put together. I don't know what the deal was. First of all, I had never put a cot together. And so <laughs> I literally slept with one end together and the other end just tilted down on the floor because I couldn't get it. I, I guess I didn't have enough strength because you have to like pull it open to make it click in. If anybody put a cot, military cot together, they know what I'm talking about. Then on top of that, by this time, I'm wrestling with the cot. I'm tired. I'm irritated, very frustrated, and extremely hot. We didn't have um, iPods and iPads and all those things back then. You, Everybody carried a, um, oh my gosh. Walkman. So I'm a big music person and I figured, you know, having the music, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I just felt like it would make me feel better. So I had brought all my favorite tunes and I dropped my Walkman trying to put the stupid cop together and it busted up. So I did not have one. I was so through with that day. And I think if I'm not mistaken, our AC was not working yet in the tent. I just laid in that half put together cot and I literally cried myself to sleep because I was trying to figure out what in the hell did I get myself into? This is not the military that I had signed up for. Hate to say it, but when I signed up, I never really thought that I would have to go to war. It never in my wildest dreams did I think I have to go to war. So the next day, um, I think that night was only about maybe five of us in the tent. There was a tent to help 12 people. 
So the next day we had more ladies coming in. Um, you know, I have feeling a little bit better because I got some sleep. Somebody helped me put my cot together and we kind of decided where we were going to sleep. And since those of us who got there early, we got to pick our space. So I was all the way in the back against the back wall of the um, tent. They finally got our AC to work in, which was a blessing because I'm telling you, 115, 120 degrees, it ain't no joke. So I was in the back. Um, at that time, we did not have um, Porty John's. We had a bathroom tent that was co-ed. So you may be used the bathroom next to a guy. You know, some things, when, you, <laughs> when you're in the military, after a point in certain situations, you don't even care. If you got to go to the bathroom, I don't care if there's a guy using the, the toilet next to me. They did finally bring in Porty John's, which, hmm, I'm going to have to have that as a separate story, the whole Porty John thing. We did have a chow tent, and um, the food wasn't bad, I have to say. We had a chow tent, and actually where we were at, we had, um, right behind us was a section of Army. I felt so bad for them because they had, like, the pup tents. I don't know if people know what that is. It's like the old-fashioned tents that you just put up, the small ones. We had big old tents. Like I said, we had air conditioning and all that. So um, when they came from Kuwait, they would come there and rest up and then go back. So they ate at our chow hall with us and all that. The first week, it was pretty much trying to get things prepared so, um, my job was actually on the makeshift flight line. And, um, so we went there and the first week what we did, we filled a whole lot of sandbags and made a whole lot of bunkers because every tent in tent city had to have its own bunker. And then where I worked at, we had to have our own bunker. So I am an expert at filling sandbags and making a bunker. So that's what we pretty much did. I worked 12 hours, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. I worked the 12 midnight to 12 noon. Me and, well, in the beginning, which was, it was horrible. We had not gotten our, um, it was like a mini trailer because of the type of equipment we had. We had to have, um, you know, AC in there. We had to have a cool. So we had not gotten our mini trailer it was like one side was us the other side was the parachute shop so we were in the tent with um the people that did refueling um uh, maintenance type people so like i told you my career field there wasn't a whole lot of women and then when we had to go to this conflict a lot of the de um departments did not send females they tried to send the men that worked and left the females at the base. Unfortunately for me, I was not in one of those departments. So the first, I want to say first month, might have been the first month, I worked out of a tent with 65 guys. This is no lie. I was the only female in the tent it was horrible because they didn't talk about anything i was interested in they talked about sports they talked about females they talked about sports they talked about females all extremely extremely boring so while i was working with them i being the only female i used to have really really and if guys are listening to this story, they probably could care less. But I used to have really extremely bad cramps. And when I was stressed, they would get even worse. And at that time, I wasn't as fluffy as I am now. I probably weighed maybe 120 pounds, maybe. So, man, when I got my first period when I was over there, them cramps was knocking me back and forth. It was horrible. 
So because they were so bad, I was literally crying. Um, they had one of the guys take me to the makeshift medic tent. And there really wasn't a whole lot they could do for me. So they gave me some pain pills. Now, I wanted to go back to my tent. Because I knew the pain pills were going to make me sleepy. But my sergeant was like, no, I couldn't go. I had to go back to the tent to work. Now, we have four people, so two people worked each shift. I worked with the laziest man in the world. All he did was talk. You ever meet a guy that talks a whole lot? He was loud. He was crass. He just talked all the time. His name was Lou. Last name was Lewis. And he was from Louisiana, and he had about seven or eight kids, something like that. But, oh, he was, I mean... He, I don't know. He he just had no class, no, no class about him whatsoever. So instead of letting me go back to the tent and sleep it off, no, they gave me the medication and sent me back. So when we worked our 12-hour shifts, we were not supposed to sleep. Even though we were not doing anything at the time, we were not supposed to sleep. So here I come back and I took the pain pills and they are making me so sleepy. So I was sitting at the machine that we used to analyze the oil sample, trying not to doze off, and then I was just doing a nod. But somebody told my sergeant that I was sleeping, and I wasn't. Do you know that this guy tried to give me an Article 15, which is a disciplinary disciplinary action? which in non-war time is bad enough because you can lose rank, you can lose money. Um, there's a lot of things that can happen under Article 15, but during wartime, it's like treason. Treason. I could literally go get put in prison, military prison, for having an Article 15 during wartime. So now I am livid and I'm upset and I'm like, but I wasn't sleeping. I was like, I was extremely tired from that pain pill, but I, I didn't go to sleep. Matter of fact, I told him I could tell you the conversation that the guys were having. The problem was I didn't have anybody to talk to because I didn't want to talk about the stupid stuff the guys were talking about. And I was having uh, cramps extremely bad. So I'm just trying to wait for the medication to kick in and take away the pain. So he didn't want to hear it. And this guy was one, he's like very anal. Everything had I had to be dotted, every T cross and all this stuff. And he was real hyper. And I think it was funny to me because being over there with so many males, some, most of them were so scared. And here I was a female, but I wasn't even as scared as they were. They just lost their mind when we got over there. It's just like they could not deal with the situation at hand. And he was one of them. I don't think he wanted to be there. I mean, who would? But he was really um, upset about having to come and leaving his family and all this stuff because he was um, very controlling. So I think the fact of leaving his wife in charge of everything for some reason really set him off. So this whole thing about the Article 15, I was like, I'm not signing it. So I went to the captain in part one. I told you about the female captain I had. And I went to her, and I'm like, hey, and I told her the story just like I'm telling you guys. And she was like, don't worry about it, Deborah. It's not going nowhere because it would have to go through her. So he gave me a little Article 15. I don't think I spoke to him again unless I had to for the rest of the time that we were over there. I was so sick of him and his emotional roller coaster. It was just, just it was way too much. I'm so glad he worked the other shift. So he wrote it up. I didn't sign it and my captain tore it up because there wasn't anything to give me an article 15 for. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm telling you, being in a stressful situation like war, you never know how people are going to act. I mean, they are real, <clears throat> they act real special. So the first week or two, Maybe we got into our trailer before the month was up. Maybe we were in the tent for about two weeks. I'm trying to think. 
No, maybe it was, maybe it was about a month. Anyway, they um, decided to give us all um, weapons. M16. Everybody got an M16 that was out on the flight line. The very first night that we had the M16s, all of a sudden, we're hearing shooting. Now, we're on a makeshift flight line. There's no lights unless you there's the lights from the jets and then the lights from some of the equipment, lighting sources that they have out there when they're working, getting the jets prepared to fly, to take off and come back. Where we were at, there was no lights. You had flashlights. So all of a sudden, we got a, um, and I'm tired because I can't think of the words for anything. Um, we had alarms that would go off to let us know if something was going on, like if you need to get in the bunker, if you need to have your chem gear on. And, and let me say this. The first month, we had to wear our chem gear 24-7. They finally... Um, in like the second week, decided that we could take it off to take a shower. But like the first week and a half, first two weeks, we could not take off our chem gear. And you're talking about, oh my gosh, hot, heavy, you got your uniform on, plus your chem gear, and it's got charcoal on the inside of it. And this happened, um, I want to say, my time span as far as how things went, I'm not sure how long. Because that happened after we, after the war actually started for us. So I'm going to say maybe the first two weeks was more prep. And then we got into where um, we went and got involved in the conflict. And I'll make that part three. So like I said, they gave us all M16. So they sent it off, sent off an alarm. We all ran and got in the bunker. And we're sitting because we all have, I mean, we have radios to talk back and forth so we would know what was going on. So all I'm hearing is da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I'm thinking that somebody done got through past Kuwait and got past the Army, and here they are at the at the King Fight International. So I'm tripping. And of course, the guys I'm in the bunker with are even tripping even more. Come to find out, some knucklehead thought he heard something, so he started shooting. Somebody else heard him shooting, thought somebody was shooting at them. So it was us shooting at each other. And needless to say, after that night, we all did not get M16. Uh, yeah, M16s anymore. They kind of took them up and they only gave them two. I think each um, work area had one. One person was in charge of it, you know, had a gun weapon to carry but yeah they took him back i was like that's the air force for you before we even get involved in the conflict we've been like killed each other out here on the flight line crazy 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 and then the thing is i'm sitting in we're in the bunker because we don't know exactly what's going on all we know is we're hearing gunfire back and forth you know and they don't told us that everybody get in the bunkers because they're trying to figure out what's going on so I'm in there with like, I want to say, four guys. Because we were down at the place where we actually worked at. And um, the guy that I work with, he's going to look at me talking about some. I just want to let you know, if this is the end, then um, I'm going to um, take your atropine. And um, I, I might rape you. And just like what kind of crap well, I probably should have said that on YouTube grape you um and I'm sitting there looking at this crazy butt man and I'm like you must have lost your mind because first I'm gonna shoot you then take your atropine so they won't be having any of that and then my thing is if if they have put chemicals on us why would you even think about taking your chem gear off to do that uh, some of the things that I, I'm going tell you, some of the things I heard <laughs> during wartime was, uh, it was just beyond, I don't know, I can't find a word for it. But yeah, um, we had to take 
an Amthrex shot before we were supposed to take it before we left to go over there. Now, this is what they actually shoot animals up on farms, like cows and stuff up on the farm. And they were given to us. It was supposed to help against um, any type of um, chemicals being in the air if they did a chemical attack. So, I refused to take it. We had to take enough shots before we went over there anyway. I refused to take it. So my commander actually came to the tent one night and he was like, um, Sergeant Parker, can I talk to you? And I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, the major's down here. And he wants to talk to me. And he's like, um, I heard you didn't take the, um, the shot. And I was like, no, sir. He was like, well, I'm going to tell you like this. I took the shot. I had to take the shot and you're going to have to take the shot. Or here we go with another Article 15 discussion. So I had to take the shot or I was probably going to go to prison. I was just like, oh my God, this thing was just crazy to me because I felt like I should have the choice of whether I wanted to take that stupid shot. Anyway, I ended up having to take it because personally, I'd rather take the shot than go do some time in a military prison. All right, so I'm going to end there. That's kind of like the first couple of weeks that we were there. Like I said, we filled up a whole lot of sandbags, um, tried to kill each other. I uh, found out that my coworkers would rape me and take my um, atropine. The thing that we, like if you get chemicals, uh, had a chemical attack, if some got on you, I might be saying the wrong word. <laughs> I still think I am. Anyway, everybody had two self-injections that you would take and self-inject yourself or if the other person couldn't do themselves you could take theirs and inject it in there for them which is supposed to um keep you alive for a while so yeah i think i'm gonna end there because i'm a little tired and i sound more rambling than telling a good story so i'm going to stop there because part three will be about the night that we actually got into the conflict. Now, that night was really something. So, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm hoping I'm telling it in a way that, I don't know, that people can kind of feel like they're there, like especially as women being in a tent with 65 guys and it's hot and they're talking about stupid stuff and you got to work from 12 midnight to 12 noon. And how boring it probably was with them. But then, on the other hand, you knew that you were there for a different reason. Okay, so I'm going to call it a night. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Oh, now here's my room. It's junky now, but... Where is he? Oh. The watchdog is asleep. He got to get a haircut. He is knocked out. So his bed is right there. He'd rather sleep right there. Okay, so Parker sleep. I'm getting ready to join him. I will talk to you guys tomorrow or later today. Bye.